So imagine that you're working on your AI generated text, you're working on it manually, you're manually rephrasing and rewriting every single sentence until you manage to get it down to 0% AI generated uh, content. But then as you're ready to submit your work, your dissertation or your assignment, you submit it through Turnitin, only to find that now it gets flagged as 100% AI generated content. So what happened and how can we avoid this situation. So in this video, I want to once again quickly talk about how AI detection works. And this time I want to focus again on the structure of AI detection. So I do have a, a video about that. In my previous video, I did talk a little bit about the structure and explain that it's taken the, the full context into consideration. So in this video, I want to talk about this even more because the situation that I've described is actually pretty common. And I've seen that happening uh, to my clients, to my students, I've seen that happening uh, to the work that I've been working on as well. So it's very important to to understand how to avoid that and and why uh, this happens in the first place. So remember that previous video in which I explained that AI detection, uh, AI detectors take the full context into consideration. So they are not looking just at the individual sentence. They are not looking at uh, just individual words within a sentence. They are looking at the, the full context, which means that the more context they see, the more accurate they become. So they're looking at the context of your whole, uh, the whole document that you're submitting. In practice, what this means is that you do need to provide that full context to this AI detect, uh, detecting tool in order for it to really accurately, accurately establish and evaluate the, the percentage of AI content in your work. So for example, if you have a document in which you have several different AI generated or written uh, sections, you uh, you do want to let this AI detection tool see the full document where both of these sections are present. Ideally, you do want it to see the full document full stop. So even with all the human written content in between, because as I explained before, sometimes the human written content also gets flagged as AI written content, content just because of proximity to it, or if it is uh, squeezed between two AI generated sections, it is likely to also get flagged as AI, AI written. So you do, do want to ideally provide the full context of the full document, or at the very least, you do want to provide all the AI generated text to that AI detection tool. So what you do not want to be doing is breaking that, uh, that AI generated content into pieces and then feeding these pieces separately into AI detection tool, and then maybe working on these pieces separately in AI detection tool, because what's going to happen is that even if you manage to bring it down, so I'm talking about free tools online, for example, which are otherwise great, but their biggest limitation is the, the word limit, the word cap. So usually they have 1000 words or maybe 1500 words that they can, they can work on uh, at once, which means that if you have a longer text, usually what people do is that they break it down and then feed into these uh, AI detection tools one by one, and they uh, they work on these uh, these uh, pieces of text separately, only then to uh, to copy and paste these pieces of text back into the original document. What's going to happen then is because you were working on this uh, AI generated content separately, you did not give that tool the full uh, content that tool lacked the full content. So the the data, in other words, that it had access to was limited by 50%. For example, if you broke, uh, if you broke the text down into two pieces that you were working on. So then as you feed it back or paste it back into that document, and then uh, this document gets analyzed by the proper AI detection tool, which is for example, turn it in, because that's usually what universities use. And this tool does look at the, ho the whole document. This time, this tool has access to all the data, 100% of data. So twice, uh, double the, the amount of uh, the tool that uh, or the access that the tool you're using online had access to. And now it looks at all these patterns and trends that you didn't even see or the tool you're using also didn't have any chance to see because again, you were only letting it work on on 50% of that text. So to demonstrate how this works, I designed a little experiment, I'll show you the results of this experiment after a very short ad break. So before we continue, I wanted to remind you to have a look at the ebooks that I publish, including this ebook in which I explain how to use ChatGPT for thematic analysis, or this ebook in which I share 84 prompts for different stages of your dissertation writing. Also have a look at my website to browse through the different services that I offer, including AI humanizing service where I humanize and edit your AI generated text. We can also meet through Zoom and I can explain to you how to do it manually, as well as address any other aspect of planning or conducting your qualitative research study. So now let's get back to the video. So what I did for my experiment, I asked ChatGPT to generate me an example, a hypothetical findings 
uh, chapter findings for a study that uh, tries uh, to address the use of digital technology in a classroom different challenges the way it's been used and all that stuff it doesn't really matter what it was it was hypothetical and the reason i asked ChatGPT to generate that is of course because i wanted it to be flagged as ai generated so what i did i took this section and i pasted it into microsoft word so now i have this whole chapter however because it was too long i decided let's break it down into two parts and we'll just separately work on these two parts in a free ai uh, detecting tool that i can find uh, that i find online and sure enough, as I expected, that online tool, which is actually a pretty good tool, I really like using it for smaller text, uh, did flag uh, both of these sections with some AI generated content. It wasn't actually 100%, but it did flag some high percentage of AI generated content. content. So what I was doing next is working on each one separately. So you can see one uh, section here is the same section, it's just different formatting because it doesn't have any bold headings. but the same section uh, uh, until I managed to bring it down to 0% AI content. And then I worked on this other section and again, managed to bring it down to 0% AI generated content. So then I took both of these sections, copied and pasted them back into this document. So again, because it was too long, I decided to break it down into two sections. Each one now shows 0% generated AI generated content. Now I have this uh, file, this document that I'm planning to uh, submit or uh, at least run it through a proper AI generate, uh, generation or AI detection tool that takes into consideration the full context, um, namely the full document this time. And when I did, this is the result. So you can see now the result of this, this scan that I ran, it took into consideration uh, the whole document. You can see these sections, you can see the challenges start here. So th this was the second half of the document, and this is the first half of the document. So now it's showing 100% because now, as I said, it's looking at the full content before that, uh, the tool I was using was only given uh, a small chunk of that content or exactly 50% of that that content or context. Now it's looking at the full document. So the patterns that are there, now it sees the patterns. Before that, it could not, didn't have any chance because I didn't give that other tool any chance to see the patterns. So this is in short how it works. There is so much more to it. So it does uh, break things down if you, if you start checking into why exactly this is happening or different AI expressions. Remember another thing about these tools that they have access to huge language corpora online. So huge data sets of millions and millions of documents, both human written and AI generated. What they do is they compare the expressions in these documents to these huge data sets. So that's, uh, that's what they are doing. And even if the expressions seem to be pretty common expressions and something we would normally use, uh, they still calculate the likelihood of different expressions that are, uh, let's say, less common ex uh, being present in the same document at the same time. So basically, it's, it's high level maths that I would not be capable of, of doing. And I don't think many of us would, but, but that's how they work. So it's generally a much more thorough tool, but you don't have to worry about this. The only thing you have to worry about is what I said earlier. If you have a longer text, you do uh, want to provide this full context to whatever tool you're using. You can't just break it down into different pieces, work on these different pieces, and then put it back together and expect the result to be the same because it's not going to be the same. You saw exactly what happened. It showed 0% for both parts and it shows 100% uh, once I pasted it here. So, so it's pretty unbelievable. People are shocked why this is happening. Remember also that AI uh, detection flags, sometimes human written text as AI generated text, just because of proximity to AI generated text. So, so you do have to provide the full uh, context, the more context, the better. So this is it. I hope that you learned something new. We're all new to this stuff. It's extremely confusing every day. I'm learning something new and trying to, to teach you how this works because otherwise I know how confusing and frustrating it can be. So feel free to ask me questions in the comments. If you have any, like the video if you learned something new and consider subscribing if you're new around here.